Hi guys, it's Shannon here to talk to you about Anchor. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm. Hi everyone, welcome to Out in the Sticks. I'm your host Shannon and with me, as always, my sister from the same mister, Christina. Hey everybody. How's it going? Going good. Happy Halloween yes, it's everyone. Halloween. It's Halloween. 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 We did not plan that. We did not. Gosh, we are good. (laughs) We are. We should take this on the road. We are taking this on the road. As soon as all this COVID shit's over, (laughs) we are are hitting the road. We can't do anything until it's over. We're We're stuck in a closet. (laughs) (laughs) But after that, by God, we are. (laughs) We are there. We're going to be out there and loving every minute of it. All right, guys. Um... Before we get started, we would like to remind you that we are on Twitter. We are on mm-hmm. Instagram. Yes. We are at one crime. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wrong show. This is the wrong show. That's our <laughs> other show. We are at O-I-T-S underscore podcast at both of those. Yes. I'll, I'm sorry I misspoke. Jeez. But speaking of one crime, you can go listen to yes, our other show, can. One Crime at a Time. Um, the, the, the story we're doing tonight, you can actually go hear the first part of that story. Yes, you can. On, and it ties into this one. Yes, on One Crime at a Time. We had a little, we're doing a little tie-in for Halloween. It's we, our special. We're doing the murder part on our murder what show. Is that special? And we're doing the paranormal part on our paranormal show. And I guarantee you, the, this is what the, the first thing that popped in everybody's mind <laughs> when you said that. I doubt it. I'm sure it, it maybe is. it was. I don't know. It I mean, wasn't. there are others, but yeah. but if you like true crime and are into that, go listen to us yes. there. Um, I'll put a link to that show in our show notes, as I did with the other one. Um, so I guess without further ado, are you ready I to am. tell us the story? I do, and I just want to say before I get into the story that this was difficult to research. <laughs> Because ninety nine point nine percent of it is bullshit. Is that well, why? <laughs> a lot of it is, and there is just so Spoiler alert. much. Anyway, did I just ruin your whole story? No, okay. no, because I'm, I'm just my brain is fried, so it's okay. We're just we're just gonna tell the story. Well, let's just go for it. Yeah, we're gonna see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm interested to know how it's gonna go. All right, so tonight we are going to go to Amityville, Long Island, New York. And specifically, we are going to go to 112 Ocean Avenue. Okay. So 112 Ocean Avenue, of course, is in the small village of Amityville on Long Island. It's a large five-bedroom Dutch colonial house with a distinct gamble roof. And this property and this house sits on a canal. Mm Mm-hmm. The house was built in 1927 on what was possibly the site of an ancient enclosure for the sick, mad, and dying. Now, this enclosure was supposedly run by the Shinnecock Indian Nation. Shinnecock. Shinnecock. I knew you were going there. That's why I stopped. (laughs) However you pronounce it, if you know, let me know. Shinnecock Indian. Shinnecock tribe. But there is no evidence... That this is true. And the leaders of this tribe have said that there is, they have never run an enclosure for the mad, sick, and dying anywhere near this property. They actually did about, it was actually in New York. 
that's about what 75 I, that's miles. Why said, that's why I said nowhere near this property. I mean, I mean, I mean, in New Jersey, not New York. It wasn't near this particular. Right. It was in. Site. It was in Jersey. <laughs> You didn't let me finish again. <laughs> Would you let me I, I tell know, the story? I know stuff. I know stuff. I actually know stuff about this one. I just want to. I just want to tell it. Okay, you're pro- you're gonna you're gonna flip when I read this part. In 1965, the DeFeo family moved into the house and gave it the name of High Hopes. Yes, they did. It has re- been reported. Now I don't know if it's true. Before you jump down my throat. <laughs> I'm just talking about what people say, okay? The word on the street. The word on the street is that Ronald DeFeo Sr. had dealings with the occult. His housekeeper recalled being scared many times after Ronald Sr. would talk of predicting the future. His his prediction was probably like, I foresee me kicking your ass. (laughs) That's probably why she was scared. I I foresee my whole family dying. I foresee me kicking, sticking my foot in the crack of your ass. That's probably why she was scared. What a dickhead. And late, if you would like to know what kind of a dickhead he go is, go listen to our other podcast. Go listen to the first part of our story yes. on one because I'm time. not going to go into all of that. That's on the other one. Right, I'm just so, giving a little bit of hint about the house, right? Of why it may have been haunted. Not saying it was, <laughs> but he was a real dickhead. He, yeah. <laughs> In late 1973, Ronald Senior reportedly called in an exorcist to cleanse the house. Claiming to the priest, as well as his son, at one point, if you go listen to the other mm-hmm. podcast, that he had a devil on his back. You think he meant like, like actually, like riding piggyback on his back, or just sitting on his shoulder? I think he was just sitting on his shoulder, <laughs> sitting there going, "You're an asshole." <laughs> so it was like on his shoulder, but because uh, I had pictured like a. Like what a I devil. actually <laughs> had pictured was this devil standing behind him, giggling in his ear, like, hee, 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 I know I just, what's going to happen. I just, I know really, I just pictured happen. it as like a little devil riding piggyback. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> That's just me, though. Now, could this devil be on his back be ties to the occult? Or was he referring to his son, Ronald Jr., who was heavy into drugs and other unlawful activities? Wouldn't he just say... That's my son. He's a fucking. Well, see, that's what I thought. Loser. But I'm just, shit. you know, I'm just, I'm just theories. I'm going through theories. Okay. Go, go away. <laughs> In October of 1974, Ronald Sr. installed a statue of St. Jo- Joseph holding baby Jesus. Now, for those of you who don't know, St. Joseph was married to the Virgin Mary. And he was Jesus' legal father. And he is the patron saint of workers and the sick, and he protects against doubt and hesitation and helps bring a happy death, which is really creepy that just a <laughs> month. <laughs> I mean, that's a just, happy death. Oh, that just sends chills down my spine because I don't know that that's why he put the statue out there. It's just weird. Mm-hmm. On November 13th, 1974, the next month, the high hopes of the house were dashed when 23-year-old Ronald Joseph DeFeo Jr. murdered his parents and four siblings while they slept. Though he has changed his story many times, Butch has said that he heard voices telling him to kill his family. Some people think that Ronald Sr.'s possible ties to the occult could be the reason for the voices because he brought evil spirits into the home. Now, 112 Ocean Avenue remained empty for 13 months following the murders. It was put up for sale earlier in 1975, but they were having a hard time selling it. Why? Due to the patu to its past. <laughs> Enter the Lutz family. <laughs> Here we go. When the Lutz family had their first walkthrough of the house in late 1975, the real estate agent told them of the murders. And they said that they kind of looked at each other because they didn't remember what she was talking about, which is BS. That's ex- because that, is that was like the boy, biggest bullshit. story. That was like the biggest story for like a year and a I'm half. I'm calling bullshit on that. They knew exactly what happened in that house. Well, whether they did or they didn't. Well, I'm telling you that they did. 
after talking it over with the entire family, which would be their three children, they decided that the murders being taking place in the house would not be a problem. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> you got five people dead because, uh, no, six, six people, people dead, dead because their son Because was the devil evil. told him to do it. Right. So everything's <laughs> I'm sure, fine. I'm sure it'll be cool. Just keep the St. Joseph statue out there and you'll die happy. <laughs> <laughs> when the devil kills you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, you know. Hey. You're happy. Yeah, at least you're happy. At least you're happy. The Lutz family purchased the home at a drastically reduced price <laughs> due to the murders. Why? <laughs> <laughs> they purchased this home in 1974 for $80,000, which is... Yeah, because it's a huge, it's, it's, it's a, a huge go three online story and house. Look up, go online and look up 108. Yeah, because they changed the Ocean Avenue because they changed the address because <laughs> people wouldn't leave them alone. But now they're going to have to change it again because Every, everybody, know, everybody knows it. You can look at property records and find the address. Yeah. Easy, I did. But it's, it's a big three story house. It's huge. On a canal with a boat, boat house. house. I mean, a it's swimming pool. pool. I mean, it's huge. It's a nice, nice house. And it's in Long Island. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's not going <laughs> to yeah. So, much of the DeFeo's furniture was still in the house when the Lutz bought the house. So, they worked a deal to include it in mm-hmm. the sale for an extra $400. Right. <laughs> Man, Most... we get a deal. <laughs> well, really, we're taking they were. Really, they the were. really, they were. They but, were because... I mean, furniture even back then wasn't really cheap, cheap. Not good furniture. Well, yeah. The furniture, most of it, was still sitting in the same place that it was the night of the murders, which is just, ugh. I wonder if any of it had blood on it. That would be so cool. What if I forgot to, like, clean some of it? That would be nasty. (laughs) And actually, the Lutz family slept on the bed frames with new mattresses that the DeFeo family had slept in on the night that they were murdered. Hold on. These people were just asking for something to happen. a minute. Hold on a minute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you telling me these cheap fucks? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they didn't even throw the bed frames you, away. Today you can get a bed frame for like $15. I know. <laughs> so back then. But no, 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 no. They were there, so they just threw some new mattresses on them and slept on them. Well, at least they changed the mattress, for God's sake. Well, I think the real estate company probably took the mattresses out <laughs> because they were blood because stained. they had so much blood on them there was no way they were going to get all oh that my out. god so these people were really just <laughs> asking for something to happen you do not sleep in the same bed that somebody was murdered in people throw it away yeah i'd say i mean i don't believe in this stuff but i mean that's if just you're say, wanting something to happen uh, that's just asking which i believe it. they were but we'll we will go into that later the Lutz family moved in on December 19th, 1975. They described moving into the house as a dream come true. But the family would only live in the house for 28 days. Why? <laughs> Their tales of horror are what inspired the book, The Amityville Horror by Jay Anson, thus beginning the most famous haunting in the United States history. So. Never now, heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Notice I didn't say the most famous haunting in the world. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I have, Leeds Castle. I have. Leeds Castle is the most haunted, haunted, most famous haunting in the world. Yeah, I've heard of it. We're gonna do that one one day. <sighs> now I will say that Daniel Lutz has said that George Lutz reportedly had a history of dabbling in the occult. He just dabbled in it. What does well, that mean? <laughs> He, he practiced, just kind of dabbled he it. practiced he, in the occult. He burned he, he burned a sleep. candle every now and then. <laughs> he would <laughs> he draw um he would pentagrams hold, he would on, hold, his, on his notebook. <laughs> he would hold séances even after him and Kathy were married even before they moved into 112 Ocean Avenue. Really? And Daniel has said that George is the one that summoned the evil spirits that tormented them. Wasn't he, didn't he, wasn't he featured in some documentary? Mm-hmm. And he went Daniel. into. Daniel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I thought that was He funny. goes, guys, I recommend you go on YouTube and watch this documentary because he goes into a lot of things that a lot of people do not know. Yeah, if it's And it's true. about the family, not necessarily the haunting, about what they went through as a family. Yeah. 
like just family things and it it explains a lot <laughs> well i mean a lot really, that, there's a lot that needs explaining <laughs> it really does i mean I, I just go watch it i really suggest you watch it when the Lutz first moved in, a friend of George's learned about the history of the house and insisted on having it blessed, but didn't insist on them throwing the beds out. <laughs> For real. <laughs> it's not going to help, dude. I wonder if he knew those were the same beds. Maybe, they probably didn't tell anybody. Hell, I wouldn't. I would I be wouldn't telling to, everybody. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have told anybody even after all this happened. Well, hey, you know, we slept <laughs> on the same beds that they died in. I wouldn't have told Dumbass. nobody that. Man, I'd be like, you see this bed frame? Someone was killed on a mattress could, like, that was like, on this bed frame. <laughs> you could have made money with that. Well, alone. they did. Not well. No, they did make some money. They made some. Now they didn't make as much as old Jay Anson made. And I'm going to get into uh, that later. Okay, <laughs> we're going to get into all of that. Okay, go ahead. So a priest that George knew agreed to perform the blessing. When he arrived to perform the blessing on the afternoon of December 18th, which was the day before the Lutzes moved in, right. George and Kathy were unpacking their belongings before they brought the kids and officially moved in. When the priest began to pray, he heard a masculine voice demand that he get out. <laughs> get out! He also experienced a slap on the face because I guess he didn't get out quick <laughs> enough. I said, get out, bitch. <laughs> you think I'm playing with you? Get out. <laughs> okay, now where was I? <laughs> um, the the, the, the priest had just the got bitch, bitch slapped. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. Okay, so even though he did not mention this to the Lutzes at the time. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. A Why minute. would you not? Wait a minute. You need to get the, out of this house because so you don't want you here. You're telling me that a priest goes into a house. This is a bad joke on the start. <laughs> a priest goes into a house. A, pri a priest walks into a house. House says get out. Priest don't go. Priest doesn't get out. Priest house. gets bitch slapped. <laughs> house bitch slaps priest. Priest leaves and doesn't say a word to nobody. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't seem fit to mention this. I'm sure it's nothing. Ah, oh, this is nothing. You'll be all right. I mean, <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, can I finish now? <laughs> I just don't. I want to know what's up with this damn priest. He's a priest. Maybe he liked being slapped around. Well, you know, they're <laughs> celibate. Like... <laughs> they're Catholic. Most of them are celibate. Well, supposedly. Okay, so he did not mention this to them at the time because I guess he thought, well, maybe it's just not a big deal. What? Why wouldn't it be a big deal? I agree. I, I agree, mean, does I agree. he walk in houses every day and get bitch slapped? Apparently. So, on um, six days later, on December 24th, he did call the family and advise them to never sleep. Oh, by the way. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Let me finish. To never sleep in the second floor bedroom, which was the former bedroom of Mark and John Matthew DeFeo. So, did he just... He never did tell them what happened. <laughs> He's just like, hey, man, by Don't the way... Don't go in there. You know the other day when I was at your house... I mean, I, I mean, I'm not saying anything that happened. That back bedroom, yeah, don't. I'm not saying anything happened. I'm just but saying, I would just if, if it was it me, if, you. if it was me, I wouldn't sleep in that. I room. wouldn't use it if I were you. <laughs> I mean, ain't no reason really well, why. Kathy I'm just saying. Kathy then responded to him. Well, no, we're going to use that as a sewing room with all those needles in there with that thing. I don't think I would want to use it as a sewing room. Well, to, in her Something to be to be fair to Kathy, she wasn't told. That this she might true. get bitch slapped with needles. <laughs> this is true. She was not. Because apparently this, there's this crazy fucking priest running around. <laughs> that gets bitch slapped by ghosts. And likes it. So this call was cut short by static. So he couldn't tell her. Maybe he couldn't tell her anything else. Well, he could have fucking told her the day he was at the damn house if I, it really fucking happened. And I agree. I agree. I, but, you know, hindsight's I do play. know. I know this is bullshit. That's what I know. Soon after, the priest developed a high fever and blisters on his hands similar to stigmata. Was he rubbing it out too much? I don't know. 
<laughs> he got bitch slapped. Maybe that's why it took him six days to t- <laughs> Man, he, he ran out of lotion. We are so going to get hate mail for <laughs> this. <laughs> he ran out of lotion. <laughs> we, we are so going to be hated on for this. I do apologize. <laughs> I mean, that would cause blitz. I mean, if you're spending six days just... Uh, Let us know, guys. <laughs> Let us know. Guys what, out what there, happen. do you think if you spent six straight days masturbating, masturbating would it cause blisters on your hands? Would it cause blisters hands? on your hands? That's we all I'm asking. Know. We want to that's, know. That's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the only question I need to know. I, don't need, to. I do not need to know if you've done an experiment. <laughs> I just want to know yes or no. Or, I mean, I'm not saying go do it. Just but, you know, if you happen to do it. Opinion. <laughs> If you've known someone who's done it, yeah, I mean, tell us a story about somebody you know. We, I mean, if you if you had a thirteen year old friend, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just asking. If I'm saying it's a, I'm just wondering if it's a possibility. Okay, so after the family moved in, George underwent a sudden sudden personality change. He became sluggish and cranky, and would lash out harshly at the family. Now, most of that came from Daniel Lutz mm-hmm. on that documentary right. he did so i'm saying a lot of things about well i had heard family. that that was what and that's when, mostly what it's about yeah. to be honest with you yeah <clears throat> george stated that he couldn't get warm in the house for many days he could have had the flu don't know <laughs> maybe, they kept the, maybe he was cranky because he was fucking sick <laughs> could be <laughs> they kept the fireplace burning day and night in an attempt to stay warm the family would also experience cold spots throughout the house, and it is said that George would wake up at 3.15 every morning, which is around the time that the DeFeo murders took place. Can I, okay. I said I around. Let, I know, but let me say something. The cold spots. Can I point out that it was December in New York? <laughs> well... <laughs> These were unnatural, I um, guess, unnatural cold spots, which I have experienced, and they do feel different than just, like, a draft. And as far as, what did you just say about, what was the last thing you said? I don't know. We'll look back at your notes. <laughs> <laughs> that George would wake up at 3.15 every morning, okay. which is around the time that the DeFeo murders took place. Now, now what did- I read was... was they said it was the exact time, and I'm like, that, no, no, it's not. That's what I said. I said no, so that's why I put around the time that the murders took place. That's so did he notes. ever think to maybe reset his alarm the to alarm a different to a different off. time? <laughs> the alarm didn't go off. <laughs> the alarm didn't go off. Uh, you know, but you know how you get into a rhythm, and like you will wake up and that, at the and same that is time. true. Like maybe at first he woke up at that time for no reason, but once your body gets, gets into, into a, a rhythm, rhythm, you'll wake up at that same time. Right. With, so maybe like the other morning, I didn't. I forgot to set my alarm right. the night before, and I woke up at five o'clock, which right. is the time I wake up every morning. Right. Exactly. Just came wide awake. So I mean, it does happen. Right. I'll agree on that. But the first couple of times, it's kind of unexplainable. Well, I mean, maybe his sleep pattern was off because he had been up, you know, his... Or he could have been been doing seances. He had been moving, so he's not... You you know that you're not on your regular schedule when you're doing some kind of big project like that. Uh, I'm just saying that there's... It's very coincidental, and there's a very... There's a lot of reasons why that would happen. I will agree that some things on here are very coincidental. But I will say that I do believe that they experienced something, but I'll get into why I believe that. I don't believe oh. they experienced everything was paranormal. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't. And I don't believe the movie and the book one bit. So. No, the mo- the book is total bullshit, and the movie oh, yeah. is even more bullshit oh, yeah. than the book. So, and after those come out, it's hard to distinguish what may be true and what is not right. because of that. And they would also smell strange odors in the house. And they would also wake up in the morning to find strange gelatinous drops on the carpet. I don't know where that would come from. That's kind of weird. I'm not saying it can't be natural, but I don't know where it would come from. I'm not a scientist, but I bet there's a scientist out there that could explain that. So if you could, please email us. one. Cr- and I mean, out in the sticks at gmail.com. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, if, if you can find a reasonable explanation for drops of gelatinous material or whatever being on the floor 
I'd love to it. know it. Yeah. I just gave out the wrong email address. It's actually out in the sticks pod at gmail dot com. Thank Did you. you get that? <laughs> Scratch the first one. <laughs> out, out in the, the sticks, sticks pod, pod at, at gmail dot com. Yes, thank you. And uh, when George would wake up at 3.15 in the mornings, the boathouse door would always be open after he had closed it and latched it the night before. But, now I do have to say on this one, it could have been wind. There is I don't know what, but the thing... There I, could have been a homeless man sleeping in their boathouse. Again, <laughs> but I don't know what kind of latch they had on the door. Right. So that would be hard for me to determine. Right. I mean... If I could see what kind of latch they had, then I could tell you, I'll just, you know. Yeah. They reported that the front door would slam shut in the middle of the night, and an invisible force... An invisible? I don't know what I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> you mean Help in, me. You mean invisible? I told you my brain was fried. <laughs> and I it, mean, I guess technically it is invisible. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it. A force that you could not see... <laughs> Would, would knock a knife down in the kitchen at different times. So the family would complain that flies would constantly be in their house, even though it was December in New York and flies should not be buzzing around. Throw, their, throw your rotten strawberries away. Or the dead body in the basement. <laughs> Whatever you've got in there. If there was an extra body, they just forgot. They to forgot. Take out. <laughs> you know, some people have that theory that there was a I do. I body. do know that, yes. But I no, there wasn't. There was not. No, there wasn't. I mean, they looked through the whole house. I, saw I that mean, on, they're not stupid. I saw that on some message boards when I was doing research I mean, the these police officers actually did a really good job yes, investigating did. that murder. I they mean, did. the next, within two or three days, they had the killer. Yeah, even though the, they the had him day. the whole time, but. They had him confessed. Yeah. They would. They said that they would see shadow figures in the house, which I know. Look, I know everybody's theory on shadow figures, but they are real because I've seen them. Now, not every shadow figure that everybody reports is real, but they do exist. Kathy said she would constantly have dreams of the murders, and the things that she would dream would echo the events that took place the night of the I thought that murders. she didn't know anything about these okay, murders. Okay, see, that, that was my thing. <laughs> That's why I said bullshit. Liar. Because the only, I'm sorry, your mind does not work that way. Yeah. I could have dreams of a murder because I heard about a murder. It's not an evil spirit causing you to have dreams of a murder. If it were an evil spirit, you would actually visibly see the murder taking place while you're awake. That's just the way they work. They don't play with your dreams. Stupid people. <laughs> Plus, she said she's lied in the beginning because she said she never heard of the murder. Exactly. When they went maybe to she meet had the real heard, estate agent. Maybe she had heard of it, but George hadn't. That's bullshit. I know, but I'm just <laughs> trying, okay? Like, you wouldn't mention that if that's something you knew. Hey, you know this house <laughs> was the one. Well, maybe she really wanted the house and was scared if she mentioned it, he wouldn't buy it. I don't know. I'm calling BS. One night, George awoke to find Kathy levitating three feet off no. of the bed. No, he didn't. When she... Came back down <laughs> from her high. You mean when she was done levitating? Yeah. She had welts on her chest. Don't know what that would be from because it could just be a rash. Maybe she tried a new lotion. Don't know. <laughs> Maybe she'd been hanging out with that priest. <laughs> uh, I ain't saying. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> Uh-huh. Proceed. Daniel and Christopher have reported that they also levitated off their beds. No, they didn't. Okay. <laughs> George also claims his wife would physically transform into an old no. woman. <laughs> she did. Her face would have wrinkles and her hair would have the look of a 99-year-old woman. That's just That was just but, because he'd never seen her with makeup off. <laughs> This was also witnessed by Kathy's mother. That was a mirror she was looking at. <laughs> she was the 90-year-old woman. 
<laughs> she just didn't realize it. One night, George said he awoke to the sound of the children's beds slamming up and down on the floor. Okay. He said he could not get up and do anything because he was immobilized by an unseen force. Maybe they I, were jumping on the bed. I, I don't know. You could be. <laughs> or maybe it's because the DeFeos didn't want them in their beds and they really were like moving the beds around. Get out of my bed. I don't know. I think it's the first. <laughs> <laughs> George stated that one night he heard like a show band <laughs> warming up downstairs preparing to play. But when he got downstairs, nothing was there, but the furniture but was... But the moved. TV? <laughs> the TV was... Prob- no, it listen, was on. Listen. But when he got out the, down there, nothing was there, but the furniture was moved, and the rug was rolled up as if for dancing. Because the kids were probably down there doing some shit, and they heard him coming, and like, fuck, get back in bed. Oh, fuck. <laughs> God damn. Come on, people. Give me something to work with here. <laughs> Because so far, I'm not hearing anything <laughs> that cannot be explained. Uh, the, a couple of things can't. The shadow figures and the gelatinous. Uh, that can be explained. I, I'm telling well, you right, there's a as way. Of right now, <laughs> I cannot explain I'm, it. I'm waiting on that email. Now, the Lutz children claim that they would be thrown up the stairs by an invisible force. By invisible force, they mean George. <laughs> Could be. Uh, if you go go watch that documentary by Daniel that was done on, uh, go watch it, everybody, because it explains a lot. The family also claimed that they would constantly hear people walking upstairs when the kids were either asleep or there was no one up there. Really? Because the kids to... are always asleep whenever you think they're asleep every single time. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they invited some friends over who also experienced this. The walking, that is, not the priest. Yeah, because kids go to bed. Kids aren't going to get out of bed when there's company over. Maybe they didn't know there was company over. I'm telling you, this is bullshit. Daniel Lutz says that furniture would move around and voices would whisper to him, and he also experienced bodily possession. Now, I'm not going to pick too much, pick on Daniel too much, because I really encourage you to go watch that documentary before you pick on him i'm not picking on anybody i'm just saying that it didn't happen the way Um, they think it happened no no i'll agree that the haunting did not happen the way that they're saying it happened daniel also did get his hand smashed in the window like in the movie but it didn't break it or anything the window just came down on Mm -hmm. it basically which is an old house right and if you've ever lived in an old house, those windows will fall. They're not spring-loaded people. No. They're weighted, mm-hmm. and they will fall. Yep. So, I mean, it could be paranormal, but chances it's, are it was just an old I'm window. I'm telling you right now, it's not. The windows in the room that was formerly Butch DeFeo's room would swing open on their own. They latched, so I really don't know how that would happen. Because they had like a little hook and eye. If you go look at pictures... What what I'm saying is, just because somebody says this happens, doesn't mean that it no, actually happened. No, it doesn't, happened. but that is one thing that could have happened that they're not trying to make it all this big, you know, <laughs> Flying production. <pigs>. Yeah. <laughs> they're not trying to make it into this big production, so that is something that could have happened. That If your window opens by itself when you know you latched it, it's going to un- unnerve you, you know. It would me anyway. Now, I think Kathy is the instigator in this whole haunting thing because she has a lot of things happen to her. (laughs) Kathy stated that she could feel her body being taken over by unseen entities. Why don't they just show themselves? I'm tired of y'all being unseen. (laughs) And she would Stop stop hiding behind your invisibility. (laughs) For real. Uncloak yourself. And she would have unexplained bruises on her body. I get unexplained bruises on I my do body too, so I daily. thought that too. I'm like, I have bruises. I'll look down. I'm like, where did that come I from? I have bruises all the time. I mean, and if I don't you know live where the hell life, they came if from. If you live life, people, you're going to get bruises that you have no idea where they came from. I mean, I constantly have a bruise, and I'm like, what the hell did I do there? Yeah. So the family would later state 
Now, I don't know if the whole family would later state this. <laughs> I'm telling you, George and Kathy would later state this. That they would see images of demons with part of their head missing, which I don't get. How do you know if it was a... <laughs> except, well, that, exactly, first of all, how do you know it was a demon if their part of their head was missing it, too? How would a demon's head be missing? Because they're inhuman spirits that have never walked the earth in human form. So they would not get an injury that would cause their head to be missing. Oh, I just, I love that that's your, lo- that that's your logical reason. <laughs> and not because there's no such thing as demons. Yes, there is. But th- there's no way no, they no, could no, have no, their no, no. head stop, missing. Stop, stop, stop. There are such things as demons. Because Jesus exercised the demons out of somebody. I exercised the demons. And put the demons into the pigs, and then the pigs ran into the river. This house is clear. That's not how you say it. Would you like for me to say it? I said it is enough. This house is clear. clear. You're welcome. Thanks. Okay, now we're going to talk about Missy for a few minutes, which is their daughter. Missy would speak to an imaginary friend named Jody. Now, Jody would present itself in different forms to Missy. It would sometimes appear as an angel and sometimes as a large pig. One day, this is a cool little story, one day when George and Daniel were in the yard walking towards the house, they looked up at Missy's bedroom. In the window, Missy was standing at the window, and behind her was a large pig-like creature, red eyes, that was staring down at them. They ran in the house to Missy's room. When they entered the room, Missy was the only one there. On January 1st of 1976, just outside the door, they saw cloven hoof prints in the snow, which could be a pig. Or it just could be a devil. Who knows? It could be a deer. It could be a goat. <laughs> it could be Bigfoot. No, Bigfoots don't have cloven hoof pants. Big feets. Is the, the family. Of Bigfoot. I don't care because there's no such thing. The family would often see the rocking chair in Missy's room moving on. Its well, it does. It's probably the wind. It's a rocking chair. It rocks. Whatever. <laughs> it would move on its own. And they would often walk by her door and hear her talking to no one, which okay, really so is she not had an imaginary unusual friend. Per- so what? I mean, Shannon had an imaginary friend. I never did. But I Shannon did. did. You want to know what her name was? My imaginary friend was the shit. Literally, her name was Poo Poo. <laughs> it was actually a boy. Well, whatever. Its name was Poo Poo. His name. And what was so funny about this imaginary friend is I can still remember like when Mama would take us to the doctor. Mm-hmm. Shannon would yell out, don't forget poo-poo. So mom would have to act like she was holding this thing's hand. Or Shannon would won, and we'd have to walk across the street to the doctor's office. Well, we couldn't forget our poo-poo. <laughs> Missy one day drew a picture of Jody. And this picture depicts a pig walking through the snow. Now, some people, like you said, have said that the picture looks like a cat. But if you look at the picture <laughs> of a six-year-old girl drawing it, it is clearly a pig with a long snout. Well, even if she did claim to see a pig named Jody that was an imaginary friend, I just, we just sat here and told you that I had an imaginary friend named Poo Poo. That was the shit. So. We don't really want to know what that means. That means absolutely zero. No, it really doesn't. But I, it's part of, it's a big part of the story, right. so I wanted to tell it. Well, of course, but I it's, mean, it doesn't mean anything. And I will, and I will say this, that most kids who have imaginary friends is because their families or their mother and father have divorced, or they've gone through something at a Actually, young age. Actually, it's a very, it's a sign of intelligence also. Boy, they missed that one on you. No. It's, <laughs> I was extra intelligent. Because I can whatever. <laughs> All right, so in mid-January of 1976, the family attempted another house blessing, and this only seemed to make things worse. Was it the same I priest? I don't know. Yeah, I, th- I bet that guy was just itching to no, get because back in remember, there. Literally. He had to go on vacation because of the burnt blisters <laughs> on his hands. <laughs> I bet that wasn't the only place he had blisters. Probably not. That's why he had to go on vacation. Because <laughs> he couldn't walk. <laughs> 
That had to be where the blisters came from. After the blessing, they would experience what would be their last night in the house. On January 14, 1976, just 28 days after moving in, George got up that morning and called a priest to get some advice on what to do next. After experiencing what they would later describe as the most terrifying night they had ever experienced, the priest advised them to go somewhere and get some rest. So the family packed a small bag and went to Kathy's mother's house for a few days. Now, the family did not run out of the house in the middle of the night like it is portrayed in the book and the no, movie. They didn't. That night, they settled in for bed at Kathy's mother's house, and they experienced Kathy levitating off the bed. So whatever was in their house had followed them to Kathy's mother's house, according to them. I, I, I bet I know what it was that followed them. The priest. Their bullshit. <laughs> the next day, the family left and moved to San Diego, leaving <laughs> everything behind. Well, damn. They just went clear across country. They're like, screw this shit. We're leaving. I imagine that was the plan the whole time. Now, the family would never discuss or give a full account of what happened their last night in the house at 112 Ocean Avenue. When asked about this night, they would only respond that it was too frightening to discuss. Now, I'm a little bit hesitant about that because if you're wanting to tell your story about why you left this house, that's going to be the story you tell if it was that frightening. Right. So, I'm really... Uh kind of wondering if it was really as frightening i'm not going to say they didn't have experiences in the house and i'll get into why i believe they could have but i just don't think it was i think it was just like a little playful poltergeist like thing to be honest with you i don't think i know that it wasn't a flying pig and there wasn't blood coming off the walls no no there wasn't green slime and i'm gonna get down the i'm gonna get to that okay the family refused to ever go back into the house, and to this day, the Lutz children still refuse to go into the house. But now you have to think, even if it was a mild haunting, they were kids. Right. Yeah, but don't you think that you that makes it more believable if you if you refuse to go in there? Not necessarily. Doesn't it give more? You think that it would give more credence? Because you, like I said, these were kids. So anything that they say besides, like, the possession and all that, because I think that was put into their head by their mother when she was talking about her being possessed, I think they did experience, like, these windows opening and maybe some rattling of stuff and noises that they couldn't explain, which is just a little mild experience. But to a kid... No, it's just a little mild poltergeist. Get over it. (laughs) Now, the bank eventually did foreclose on the house because when they left it, they did not make any more payments on it. And all of the Lutz's belongings that they left behind were later sold at auction, including the DeFeo furniture. In a later interview, George Lutz said, We didn't get up to leave that morning. You need to understand that. This was our house. We lived here. When we left, we didn't know that what we were leaving behind we would never see again. Now, the Lutzes have also said that they believe that Butch DeFeo could have been possessed by something evil in the house. And that is what caused him to murder his family. I, no, you it's know, not. It's possible, but I don't think that that's what caused him to murder his family. Go listen to One Crime at a Time. Yeah. It, it is possible for that to happen, but I don't think that was what happened in this case. Now, over the years, many people have come to believe that the haunting of the Lutzes was a hoax. And while it may be... I'm raising my hand right there. (laughs) And while it may be, a lot of people believe this because of William Weber, Butch DeFeo's lawyer. Mm -hmm. Now, Weber said that he and the Lutzes came up with the story over many bottles of wine one night. Weber did not start saying this until after the Lutzes went somewhere else to tell their story. Weber and the Lutzes had made a deal together to take their story to a publishing company for a book deal in which they would all make money. Right. Now, Weber later changed the deal to include Butch DeFeo and his story. And George and Kathy did not agree with this, so they took their story elsewhere. And they ended up getting screwed. That's when they found Jay Anson. A big a-hole. Yep. With a capital A. Literally. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. And told him their story, which became the book, The Amityville Horror. Now, this caused Weber to bring a lawsuit against the Lutzes, and this is when he started talking 
telling of the story of how he and the Lutzes concocted the story of the hauntings and said it was all a hoax. So, I'm not saying that all of this is true, but I don't believe Weber for one reason. He was mad. Well, yeah, he was mad. Because he didn't get that book deal and wasn't going to make all this money. Right. So, I don't believe him. Right. Now, I'm not saying that it's all true. But the Lutzes didn't end up making any money either. About $300,000 was right. all they got. And I, While Anson... The Lutzes did not sign a contract with Anson for the use of their story. Right. So they did not make much money from the book. Yeah, I think it was they around 300000 They made like $300,000, which people say, well, it was 1974, but over the years, that's not going to last very long. Plus, Anson made a, ba- millions a bajillion, jillion, gillion. Millions, <laughs> because he's the one that got the movie deal. He's the one that made all the sales of the books and got all the profit mm-hmm. from that. He got the profit from the movies because right. it was his story. Right. So the Lutzes, unfortunately, remained in lawsuits until their death. And they remained in these lawsuits over the use of their story by people that they said did not have the right to use it. Which, they gave this man their... I I hate it for them, I do. But they gave this man their story. Didn't sign a contract stating that they would get any royalty if it was used. So, it was no longer their story, unfortunately. So is that why you or you tend to believe them? Somewhat, I don't believe everything. Well, they I don't. Say. Well, even George Lutz, when he, when the movie came out, George Lutz was asked about the accuracy of the movie, and his response to that question was, "Well, we did live in that house, and we did have a dog." Mm-hmm. And that, that was about the movie, right? But I'm just saying. So that a lot of that stuff, even he said, was not yeah accurate, and and I'll agree on that. I'm not saying that it was. So some say that the Lutzes came up to, with the story to hopefully make money because of their struggles. Yeah, because they were with having money. money struggles before they even bought that house, and having trouble paying the mortgage. Now, according to Daniel Lutz, who goes into great detail about the family aspect of all of this story. The family was not struggling with money, not as far as the house goes. When they bought the house, they had had the money from the selling of both George and Kathy's individual houses yeah, that because they, they had, had before right, they married. Because they they were they had not those kids weren't George's kids; right, they were his stepchildren. Right. Now they had also saved up some money. Each one of them individually had saved up some money. And with this, they were able to put down a good bit of money on the house. So this, in turn, made the mortgage and the payments lower than they would have been. Now, it did not say how much they were able to put down, but I'm assuming since they say a good bit, it was at least close to half. Or 20, 30 percent at least. Yeah. Also, with George running his land surveying business from home, they were able to save money and cut costs on different things and this also helped pay the bills now some people do say that george had filed for bankruptcy on his Mm -hmm. business now while this may be true i have searched for two weeks and cannot (laughs) find a record of any filing of a bankruptcy on lutz's land surveying i can't is that no the way. name of it? Yes. Okay, well, I will do some research. Now, it may be out there. I'm not saying it's not, but I have not been able to find it. Okay. Now, I can he... find the name of his business, but I can't find where any okay. any record of a bankruptcy. Okay. Now, people are also inclined to believe that it is a hoax because later residents of a house have had no paranormal experiences. But now, there could be reasons for this. Well, it also, I will state that I have heard... That they haven't publicly said they've had any experiences. I was fixing it. Well, they have. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I didn't because it has not been made public. They did have experiences. They had. It's not anything near what you would think the Amity of the Amityville horror from the book and the movies. But they did have little minor things like things moving. Mm Mm-hmm. Their car did catch on fire sitting in the driveway one night. The the, form, the later residents actually 
have had experiences. Not all of them, but there not is one family them, but that supposedly one. has had, but they have not they admitted. Do not you will not get it. them to admit it publicly. No, and I'm not going to tell you which family it is because no. they do not want it to be made public. But That's I'll, just what I'm I've just heard, you, but I'm not, but I'd, it could be totally untrue, too. I have it, no way of knowing if it's true I'm just, or not. I'm just trying to tell you a few of the things that they experienced, which is what I think. Supposedly. The, which is what I think that. Well, supposedly experienced, right. which is what I think the Lutzes experienced, was those little minor, you know, little things moving, kind of like what we experienced, I experienced in our house when we were growing up. Maybe just an old house. Now, the hauntings are to, now, hauntings are believed to only be attached to a house or a place, but this is not true. Hauntings can also be attached to people or things, such as furniture, statues, or other inanimate objects. So you're saying St. Joseph was possessed? Could be. Now, the house may not be what was haunted. The first and most obvious reason is that George had dealings with the occult, which has been... Supposedly. Well, supposedly, but some say he did, that were close to him. (laughs) Is that what Daniel said? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's a public documentary. You can say that. Yeah. So, this would mean that the haunting was attached to him, and when he left the house, it followed him. Is it... And that, that has been that has been documented that it supposedly happened to people before. But were he, was he, did he have any experiences of being haunted before he moved in that house? They didn't say. That, that, means, did that say, means no. They did say, now he did say that he had some experiences after they left the house but not before but i don't know because nobody has ever asked him if he had experienced anything before they moved in that well, house well the Which wrong people I have been have, talking to I him would, that would have been the first thing i asked <laughs> did you ever experience anything before you moved in here but apparently they don't think like i do okay now the second reason could be that the haunting was attached to the defeo furniture that was left in the house okay now, when it was removed from the house and sold, the haunting went with the furniture. Now, the reason I say the furniture is this was a family brutally and tragically killed. So you're saying it was the bed frames? It could have been. It could have been a chair. It could have been anything. And, I mean, this has been documented, too, that when you move. Documented how? Just because people have said it doesn't mean that it's true. How but is it listen, documented? There have been cases where people have had supposedly had ex- supposedly paranormal. that's the key word listen to me for a minute <laughs> i'm listening but i'm just saying that they have supposedly had paranormal experiences and when they would move they the same thing would happen supposedly supposedly right so they have deduced that it could have been the furniture and there was one case where a family had a piece of furniture and they removed the furniture and the haunting stopped. So you're when you use the word deduced, what you're say what you really mean to say is they are they've guessed. Basically. Yes. <laughs> exactly. But I mean it's still a documented That's not case documentation. of somebody <laughs> saying that Okay, well there's plenty of there's plenty of documentation of so. people saying things. That I will give you. Okay. And lastly one reason that the haunting could have taken place and other people not experience it is a lot of times when there's a tragedy inside a house it will leave an imprint on a place i mean and you can feel it like when you walk into a house where somebody's been murdered you can kind well, of well they feel. obviously didn't feel it because they're talk trying to t- convince everybody well that they, they were didn't even dealing know, with the occult that too. they didn't even know what had happened in that house which is bullshit. So the evil that took place on that November night, 1974, could have left its imprint inside the house. So this imprint would have replayed kind of like a movie over a period of time. But usually these imprints fade away with time. Now since the Lutzes moved into the house only a year after the murders, there is a possibility that the imprint was still strong, and that is why they would have experienced things when others didn't. Not saying it's true, this is just things I've read from parapsychologists. There are countless documented cases of some people experiencing a haunting when others don't. Sometimes, even when people live in the same house together, 
one will have experiences when the other doesn't, which is what happened in the house that we grew up in with me and you. I know that you don't want to believe it, but it happened. Okay. I know it did. You don't have to believe me. I know it happened because it happened to me. Okay. Now, the betrayal of the haunting in the book and many movies has also led people to believe that it's a hoax. Because 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 you're going to believe a movie over, I mean, (laughs) come on, people. That book and movie are total bullshit. I mean, even if the story was true, those would still be, like, 100% true, those would still be bullshit. (laughs) Now, I will never judge a a supposedly true story based on a book or a movie because they are trying to sell the book or movie. Right, so they got to make it fantastic. So they've got to get people to watch the movie or buy the book and want to read it. So they're going to always exaggerate, embellish, and fabricate stories to make it more interesting. So do not judge it on the movies and books, people. Find out, I mean, just research it. Well, listen to this podcast because we just told you all about it. Yeah, we just told you all about it. (laughs) Now, even the Lutz family admits that the things in the movie and book have been fabricated and exaggerated and have called it laughable. Now, that doesn't mean they didn't experience things. That just means that they're saying that the movie was bullshit. Christopher Lutz, which we don't hear from much because he doesn't want to be in the spotlight, Christopher Lutz watched the movie for the first time a few years ago during an interview. And he was disgusted. And, I mean, I watched parts of this interview, and you could tell. He was disgusted by the way that they portrayed the horrors the family experienced in the house. Now, we have gone over all of the Lutz's claims about the haunting Mm -hmm. and what happened. Now I'm going to discuss a few of the things that were embellished by the book (laughs) and the movie. Wow. (laughs) I'm just playing. Now, the flies did not attack the priest. No. They did have flies, but it was not like this big swarm of flies attacking people. <laughs> Just a few flies in yeah. the house. Now, there was no babysitter in the real, in real life that Jody attacked in the closet. <laughs> this supposedly happened at the time when they were going to Kathy's brother's funeral. I mean, not funeral, wedding. I apologize. The whole family in real life attended that wedding. None of them stayed home. Right. Now, the red room, the famous red room that was behind the wall and had the faces in it, it didn't exist. No, it, it, it was not what they portrayed it. To there be. was a room there, but it was just a room there. Off the was kitchen. a four foot by four foot room. Kind of under the stairs in the kitchen, like off the kitchen. Like a pantry. <laughs> like a pantry thing that was used for storage. And the inside of it just happened to be right. painted red. It was not a secret room. Right. They were, they everybody was well aware of it. The DeFeos used it to store toys and mm-hmm. tools. So, I mean, it was not this An big unknown secret. secret room. Now, George also did not fall through the stairs and into mm-hmm. the basement into sludge. Never happened. (laughs) And if you believe that, then you really need to stop and think a minute. I'm sorry, but you do. I never believed that for one minute, even when I was thought that everything was true. Well, you didn't think everything was true. No, I didn't. (laughs) Now, the toilets did not overflow with sludge either. Kathy's aunt, who was a former nun, was no longer a (laughs) nun. Because she, she was, was tired of getting none. I guess so. She <laughs> retired. <laughs> she retired. Now, she was no longer a nun at the time of her visit, and she did not get sick after her visit. Yes. She did not go running out of there scared or sick, or she just visited. They had dinner, and she left. <laughs> Nothing took over the priest's car as he was driving down the road, and the hood flipped oh, up. Yeah. Do you know that actually in different... Um, editions of that book that vehicle actually changes i know which is weird like one time i think it's a truck it like changes with the times and then it's a car yeah (laughs) which whichever year it is with it yeah and then it actually changes back to a truck in in a later edition see it's a shape shifting car (laughs) that's what it is just made up is what it is now while the windows in butch's former room would swing open from time to time they did not explode and crash in and break of course not. that never happened 
Now, the front door did not get ripped off the hinges from the inside, and the police was never called to the house not because one of time. any activity. There has never been one. There's no record of the police ever being called there no. one time. And even the ever. Lutzes, have, even George Lutz said, we never had the police to yeah. our house because of this. They would have laughed at us. But no, the front door would open and close on its own. Now, blood never dripped down the walls or through the keyholes, and the slime <laughs> never came down the stairs. Let's just clear this up once and for all. There was no sludge or slime. Except for the gelatinous period. material drops on the carpet. Which can be explained as soon as I get the email from the scientist. But now, you know, blood dripping down the walls and sludge coming down the stairs trying to kill everybody is way more exciting than gelatinous <laughs> drops on the carpet in the morning. I'm telling you, there's a, there's a, there's. I'm thinking there may be. Uh, there's I'm a just scientific saying reason at this for that. time, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know is. what it is either, but I know it exists. There may be. I mean, if there is, let me know. I'm going to ask um, my girlfriend. She's a science teacher. The Lutz family maintains to this day that the honing itself was not a hoax. Daniel claims to still have nightmares about the haunting, and Missy has never talked about the family's experiences at 112 Ocean Avenue and still refuses to do so to this day. Now, although the Lutz family has contradicted their own story mm -hmm. at times, it does not mean that they did not have some experiences. No matter how you feel about the Lutz's story, I feel that everyone can agree that the true horror of 112 Ocean Avenue occurred on November the 13th, 1974, when the evil that was Ronald DeFeo Jr. murdered his entire family while they slept. Yeah, nobody ever wants to talk about that. Nobody ever wants to talk that's like about... That's the most important thing. Yeah, that's the story of Amityville, not these stupid made-up hauntings. I mean, that's that's the true... That's the true story of Amityville. And as I said, these supposed hauntings, they could be true to a point. Now, do I believe that it's like they said it was? No, I don't. And especially when they come out. Well, I out, think that that's pretty much been, everybody knows that it's not. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of people are saying they had no experiences at all. I believe they could have had some experiences. And the reason I believe that is because there has been another family that supposedly, supposedly. had some experiences. But they were like little minor things. It wasn't. All of this demons with their heads missing and all this stuff. And people being thrown up the stairs. I don't believe that. Okay. Well, that's the story of the Amityville Horror. Um, the Amityville Haunting, I guess. Yeah, the, it's the Amityville Haunting. The horror was, was the, the murders. Worst. So I do not believe it was a horror story. I believe they had a few little things happen, like a small little haunting, and that was it. <laughs> it was just, they just... Dabbled and in that look, it, was just, it was just Casper, okay? <laughs> Leave him alone. It was just a little small haunting, nothing to get all. Well, there can be small, the, there can be mild hauntings, yeah. and there can be pretty There's, bad. There was hauntings. nothing to get it all in a tizzy for about. Real? Why are you gonna leave your house, man? Because <laughs> they didn't want to pay for it. All right, guys. Well, we hope you enjoyed our Halloween episode. Yes, and we hope you um. If you're just listening to this, go listen to the first part on One Crime at a Time. Yes, listen because to the it, part. Will, it will make a lot more sense right. if you go listen to that. Um, learn uh, about the murders if you haven't heard that story. Yes. Or just listen. And we put we put a different spin on things. So Yes. Um, and go listen to the story about the murders because most people do not know that story. Uh, I would, yeah, I would say that it's not. Because it's not. It's kind of like Because a, when people start talking about just, Amityville, the first thing that anybody's right. going to talk about is this haunting that supposedly took right. place. They don't talk about They don't talk about what really happened. Right. So, um hope you're enjoying the show. Uh, yes. this is episode number four. It is. And our um, Halloween special was and our Halloween special. Four. So um if you want to reach out to us, um you can we're on Twitter and Instagram at O I T S underscore podcast. Uh, you can email us out in the sticks pod at gmail dot com. She got it this time. I guys. did it. I did Yay. it. I did it. If you could go rate and review us, those reviews really, really do help. The actual written reviews, and we will read them on air. We'll read them back to you if good you'll or bad. send them. Yeah, good or bad. So I guess until next week, and send me your ghost stories. Yes, ghost stories because we want to start reading a ghost story. Your ghost stories. Yes. 
um, each week. So send us those at that at the email address I mentioned above, and there will be a link to it in our show notes. Yes. Um, so I guess until next week. Yep. Thanks for listening, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.